God, I love you. Hallelujah. I'm committed to doing what you say. Go where you tell me to go. Father, live like you tell me to live. I love you. I vow. I make a vow to you to serve you the rest of my days. To do everything you command. Just make it clear to me. Just tell me what you want. God, I'm content with such things as I have. You have said you would never leave me nor forsake me. And you told us to be content with what we have. I am content. I'm content where I am in my life. And Lord, I give you my life. I love you. I worship you. I will keep your commandments and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Amen. You can be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, before David start my clock, <laughs> I got a few things to get out of the way. And by the way, David, I was just clowning with David last time. David kept time on me. He did a good job. I was just kind of clowning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but before I get started, I'm, I'm, turn it on just a little bit. Yes. Yeah, that's good so I don't have to talk so long. Okay. Um, I hear a little ringing. <clears throat> okay. Now, I want to thank everybody who was able to come out uh, and support uh, the Church of God in Christ. Amen. And uh, I know it was a test for everybody, <laughs> but that's better than going to Africa to the mission field. Amen. Amen. That was our Africa. And it was an awesome time we had over there. Amen. It was an awesome, awesome time. I thank God for the saints. Uh, uh, and uh, I thank God for uh, Overseer Gregory and for Pastor Ned and Elder uh, Coleman and all the people we met over there. Glory to God. Um, you are not obligated to go back with us this evening, but it wouldn't hurt if a couple people could go with us, you know. And so I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but if you can make it this evening back with my wife and I, just a couple people that you can go back with us. Amen. But you are not obligated. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, before I get started, I need to pass. The, I don't have enough copies, <clears throat> but you can go on Facebook and you can print this out and print it if you like. But I got like four of them here, David, and I need, I need to give, you know, maybe four of our main elders in the church. I need y'all to, I'm going to give you this last one in a minute. This last one will be for you. I don't know if anybody found the time <clears throat> to go read the post that I put out on Facebook. And it's called Disputing That Is Allowed by God and Why. Okay. You ever heard people say that we ain't supposed to dispute and debate the Word of God? That's not true. Right. There are certain types of disputes and debates that God's Word has condemned. But there is certain types of disputes and debates that God has allowed. And when you go look at this, Study for yourself. If it wasn't for God sending somebody to the church to dispute leadership, lies, and things that was wrong, the church would have went off course in, in uh, Paul and Peter's new day. So whoever taught you that didn't teach you the truth. And I want you to read it because... When you read these scriptures and study for yourself, you'll understand the type of ministry that I have. It is the same identical ministry the Apostle Paul had. Now, I'm not trying to liken myself to Apostle Paul. I'm just simply saying that if you don't have a ministry like that in the uh, modern day church, the church is in trouble. You've got to dispute lies. You've got to dispute things. And at times you have to dispute leadership when they're off course. Here it is right here in your Bible. Go study to show yourself approved. And so 
everything that I do, I do it by this Bible. And I'm not doing this for me. I'm just saying this. The saints, I heard the voice of the Lord said, teach this. I'm going to be teaching this on Facebook next week, the Lord willing. But I put this post out there for everybody to read it. And I need you to go look at it. Now, there are, this next section i got disputing that is forbidden by God and why. There are also some dispute that God has forbidden. But we need to go see what is allowed by God. Right. So please go check this out and then you'll know where I'm coming from next week. Here you go, Brother David. And just pass them for out and anybody. I didn't bring enough, but you can go online and print it out. If not, we can print some for you. Uh, I I uh, <clears throat> I shared a few things on my Facebook, and when I share these things, when I find messages and I find comments on Facebook that is truth, I give a thumbs up. I show my approval, but I, I always try to say this: I don't approve of all this person's doctrine because I don't know all their doctrine. But I do approve of what I heard. Right. Now, this preacher in Houston preached a message. I 100% stand with it. We got to be a voice now. We're going to either be silent or we're just going to be little tiptoe through the tulips people. And when I heard this brother preach, I had to endorse it. Now, I did say I don't know all his doctrine. I don't know what all that man believes. So I want to be straight with people when I approve things on Facebook. I don't know everything somebody believes. I know what I heard and I know if that's true. And I put my approval on a, two or three things. And this message right here, this here message is going to show you why we need to do that. Uh, there was an issue that just went viral with Kirk Franklin. Anybody ever seen that? Y'all haven't seen that yet? You seen it? Yeah, you ought, to, you ought to look at the whole thing with the street preacher dealing with Kirk Franklin. And then they came back and they had a sit down and they reasoned together. And the brother wouldn't shake Kirk Franklin's hand at the end and he was absolutely right according to the scriptures. Now a lot of people around the country didn't like that because they said that's unkind. Baby, we better read our Bible. And we better stick with the word of God. The Bible said don't bid him God speed. It's funny how about a week prior to the, me coming into the knowledge of this thing that went viral on Kirk Franklin. That I was sitting out at night and happened to pull up something on Kirk, Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin is out there dancing like Michael Jackson. He's out there doing everything under the sun. And I love Tony Evans, I've been, I think he's, I, well, I used to think he was one of the most credible people in the country. But Tony Evans is his pastor, and Tony Evans agreed with Kirk Franklin. And, and let me tell you what, I'm going to weigh in on anything that's going on in my world because Christians shouldn't be silent. Right. Now, I am not trying to get you to agree with me. I tell my wife, I'm, here's where I stand, honey, I ain't trying to make you stand where I stand, and if you disagree with me, I ain't falling out with you. Don't I tell you that, babe? And I tell the church this, I ain't trying to get nobody on Facebook to agree with me, I'm telling y'all where I stand. Kurt Franklin is wrong, I'm sorry, Tony Evans was wrong, I'm sorry, we ain't supposed to hold hand with the world, we ain't supposed to be dancing with the devil. The Bible said that any man that's a friend of this world is an enemy of God. That street preacher was 100% right and he preached nothing but the scriptures. Now, I don't know everything else that boy believed, so I can't endorse that. I do endorse what I heard. And that's where I stand. And I stand in love. And that is love. Amen. And I, I said that, I said that not only should he be confronted, as a lot of top leaders in the church need to be confronted openly because they are not repenting when you deal with them about sin. Glory to God. God is doing something in this country, in this world, y'all, and I'm excited. Excited about what he's doing. But y'all need to go read that because if you don't believe this is scriptural to confront, to 
call names when necessary or to come up against stuff. If you don't believe it, you check your New Testament and don't ever read none of Paul's letters no more. So y'all go read that and look at it. And the reason, well, it's not why I did that, but I'm glad I did it and then I found out about this preacher. That street preacher was right according to the scriptures. And there's a lot of people don't, now there's a bunch of people standing with that street preacher. But there's a lot of Christians, and it don't mean they're not Christians because they disagree. You know, you have a right to disagree. But my stand is that street preacher was right. Amen. So that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let's get to the word. Okay, David, you can start my clock, so to speak. All right. My text is Exodus 20, verse 1. Michael, you want to bless this word for me, please? Give me a mic. You mind doing it? Ask God to help me. <clears throat> Stand right there. Hallelujah. Ask God to help me. Lord, Heavenly Father, let, um, let Apostle teach this amazing word that he's going to teach. Um, God, guide him while he is preaching and let angels help him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Amen. I want to say to the praise team, y'all look beautiful too. Y'all look yeah. so gorgeous up here. Y'all decked out. And I looked over at David and I said, that's a, a, a tremendous sounding good. You making me want to get in the praise team, girl. <laughs> I am so proud of y'all. Y'all behind me, y'all doing a good job. Jessica, awesome job. Thank God for you. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, text. Exodus 20, verse 1. I'm going to go down to verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself, which is the soul, to them. Don't submit your soul to it. Nor serve them. For the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation to them that hate me. He said that if you don't keep my commandments, I'm going to visit you. Uh -huh. Come on. Now, he, what he did say in verse 6, and I want to make sure I emphasize this because God is a merciful God. Man, you know, I, I, I love holiness. I preach holiness. I live holy. I'm going to live this way till I die. But I always remember where I come from. I remember how I struggled at one point in my life. And I don't forget about them struggles. And I know some people do struggle. Yes. But you can come out of the struggle. Amen. And here's what encouraged me when I was struggling. Bible says, show it mercy unto them, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. There are all people that love God. Some of them haven't acquired that life, that steady life of loving God. It is still a fact that if you break his commandments, you're not loving him in that. But there are some people with sensitive hearts that really, really want to do what's right. And I understand that. I was there, y'all. And so I preach strong, I preach hard, but I can't ever forget everybody not where I am. And so God is a merciful God, and I want to be a merciful preacher. But on the other hand, I can't preach no messages and endorse no sin and endorse the fact that you got time. No, you don't have time to get it right. But if you're breathing, you better hurry up and get it right. Because when Jesus comes, he's going to come as a thief in the night. And there will be no more chances. Now that's a fact. Okay. My subject this morning is idolatry. 
Last Sunday we was here, I just exalted on idolatry. And I wanted to get everybody out of here early because the weather was bad. Sister Trini really inspired this because you mentioned idolatry three or four times in your exhortation. And God showed me, no, this is three, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word be established. So God wants me to come back and develop this message on idolatry. Because people, the church, people in the church need to understand that we laugh at people like Buddha and little Mary's in the yard, but Christians sitting in churches and got little idols in their own emotions. And God said, explain this stuff. And I might have to be a little graphic today in explaining it, but I'm not going to be so graphic to offend the kids. But i got to show you the idolatry in the soul of the souls of people. So I'm talking about idolatry, and I'm going to spend a little more time than I did last week. I'm going to still try to be conscious of my time. My subtopic is understanding idolatry and why God still hates it. I told you last week, well, let me just read my introduction. The word still hate is used in my subtopic because modern day church has gone away from the commandments of God because of the preaching and teaching on grace, on the cross messages that we hear in our day and time, believe in the cross, and in Messages like no such thing as sinless perfection. That is a big doctrine in the church. And all that doctrine says is nobody can live without sin. I had to confront three preachers in the hotel. My wife was with me. We went to the hotel because the water kind of get a little high around our house. And we didn't want to trust it when uh, Hurricane Barry was coming through. So we just decided we weren't going to leave town to lead the people. We're just going to stay right here in town with everybody else. But we went to a hotel and I was kind of said, Lord, I just wasted my money because the water be buried didn't do what it did. But 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 when I had that encounter, I need to tell y'all about that encounter sometime. Made a major apostle right here in this city, a major apostle. Everybody know him. And it was a young man who preached this message of the cross that uh, my brother Jimmy Swagger populates all around the world. And, you know, I've talked with them before. I've tried to reach them before. I've reached out. I've made my stand in the city of Baton Rouge where I stand. I don't believe in that gospel. I believe in the cross. I don't believe in that perspective of the cross. Because it's a lie and it's telling people can't nobody stop sinning, yet they preach in the blood. And I, and I said, Lord, I still want to talk to somebody over there. I just need to sit down and talk to them. And guess what? I met one of them that preaches this gospel, goes to the prison every week. And God sent me to the hotel to meet him. One main apostle in this city and another woman that was messed up and she now preaching a stupid gospel. Am I right? It turned out to be a ministry trip. David, everywhere I go, preachers show up. That's my ministry. Because preachers got the church off course. Top preachers is the one got the body of Christ off course. I don't blame. I do not agree with Trump and what he says. I do not agree with the Republican Party. I do not agree with the Democratic Party. Whenever I vote, I try to vote my conscience. Sometimes it's so stinky, I don't vote no one. And don't tell me I'm going to hell if I choose not to vote. I ain't no Democrat. I ain't no Republican. I'm a kingdom man, and I will not identify with the world. But, the, the, the man, I ain't know I was going to go here. But let me tell you something. No, the Democrats just as wrong because you kill babies every year. Come on now, and, 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 you, and you're endorsing all this same-sex marriage. I ain't going to agree with that, but I ain't going to agree with President Trump either because if you touch women in the wrong places, call people the wrong name, if you don't slept around with women, why you evangelical preachers not crying out about that as well as all the killing the babies? It is hypocrisy. And the preachers are at fault around the country. But until we preachers address what's going on in the church, we might as well leave the world alone. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I lost my point. Okay. 
It's false messages like these that has spawned many that say they love God. But the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the New Covenant is crystal clear on where God and Jesus Christ stand concerning the Ten Commandments that came out of God's mouth. Okay. Now I'm teaching on idolatry, but I want to go through a few things. John 14, verse 15. Clear as day, under grace, under the cross and the blood. The true cross teaching and the true blood and grace teaching embrace the Ten Commandments. Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, you don't have to be confused what commandments Jesus was talking about because all you got to do is study the gospel. Jesus taught the Ten Commandments. So, yeah, they gave other commandments. The apostle gave other commandments. But Paul said the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. In other words, everything Paul taught, all the principles that he wrote and the statutes that he made up, he made them up from the Ten Commandments. Paul taught all ten of the commandments throughout all the epistles. All the apostles taught them. All, every book writer in the Bible taught and embraced them. And Paul even said in Hebrews chapter 5, the first principles of the oracles of God it is the oracles of God. That is the Ten Commandments. And people don't preach it no more. That's why I'm going to wear it out. Because Jesus wore it out. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the commandments Jesus gave them included the Ten Commandments that came out of his father, God's mouth. Now, John 15 verse 10 goes further to explain what commandments he was talking about. If you keep my commandments, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, the one he gave, Jesus gave, and we do have commandments under grace. We do have commandments in this new covenant. Somebody telling you there ain't no law in the New Testament, that person has lied to you. Go study saints for yourself. John 15 verse 10 said, if you keep my commandments... You shall abide in my love because that's all the commandments is, is love. And Jesus, when he summed it up, said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. He wasn't doing away with the individual Ten Commandments. He was just summing them up. Because if he did away with them, why he turned around and said, you got to keep, don't break the least of these commandments. If he threw them away, why all the apostles taught them in all their letters and it seemed like we preach everything out of this Bible. When was the last time your pastor taught this? We preach it about the Bible. And we forgot to preach the Bible. If you love me, keep my commandments. You shall abide in my love. Well, let me back up. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Watch this. Even, parallel to, just like, even as I kept my Father's commandment. Jesus said, I kept all ten commandments. All right. When he said his Father's commandment, go back and search biblical history. It was the ten commandments that came out of God's mouth. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and Jesus said, it is written, talking to the devil, he said, it is written a man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He quoted that scripture from Deuteronomy. And in Deuteronomy, when you look at that scripture, it was specifically talking about every commandment that God spoke out of his mouth on Mount Sinai. That's how man live. Now you call Jesus your savior. Well your savior said live by every word that came out of God's mouth. And if that's true, why we don't hear it? So somebody ain't preaching this Bible. Y'all pray for me to be calm. So Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. 
Even as I have kept my father's commandment. Jesus said, I kept my father's commandment. Now in 2 Peter, he said, follow me. He said, he said, he left us an example that we should follow his steps. Now if he's my Lord and I'm going to follow his steps, if he kept the father's commandments, I'm supposed to follow his steps and keep the father's commandments. Is that simple? So he said, I have kept, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. 2 John 1 and verse 6. And this is love. Y'all see, see everybody love. Love. Boy, I tell you something. Love is not what you feel. Love is keeping God's ten commandments. Because Paul in Romans 13 said, by this, talking about love, you won't break none of God's commandment. Then he called all them out. Now the Bible is clear. It says 2 John chapter 1 verse 6. Please go quote me and look at it. And this is love. Here it is right here. That we walk after God's commandments. You don't love God when you break God's commandments, church. That's good. I'm talking about the church all over the world. I don't know nobody that's breaking them, so you can't accuse me for picking at nobody. When I get ready to pick at somebody, I'll let you know I'm picking at them. <laughs> All right. I don't bite my tongue with that. Yes. Right. And I don't, I, look, I ain't backing down when God tells me to stand up and tell the church something. Yes. I ain't telling the church nothing right now. Right. I'm just teaching. I'm just trying to tell you I ain't hitting at nothing. I'm just teaching this Bible. And I ain't got nobody in mind now. That ain't even my anointing now. But when that thing come back, I'm going to do it. It ain't, it ain't on me now. I'm just teaching. And this is love. That we walk after his commandment. This is what love is, folks. The Ten Commandments. And I always tell people don't get hung up on the Sabbath day. Because God explained the Sabbath in the New Testament. Every day in Christ is the Sabbath. His body is the Sabbath. And if you in him, you in his rest. So don't get hung up on no Saturday. If you want to go to church on Saturday, nothing wrong with that. But don't condemn somebody going on Sunday. That's stupid. And I have to keep. It, he said, and if and if you keep, uh, let me let me. Uh, and this is love. The Bible tells you what love is. And this is love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment. Now he notice he said commandment with an S on the end, and now he turned around and said commandment. He's simply trying to tell you the Ten Commandments is just one commandment called love. Yeah. That's all he's trying to communicate. He's not doing away with all ten when he said commandment plural. He's just describing it as love. But if you want to know what love is in action, walk out the keep God first. Walk out the have no other gods before him. Walk after, honor your father and your mother. This is walking it out. This is love walking it out. It's what he's saying right there. Right. Yeah. That's what he's saying. So he said, this is love. Uh, for this is love, the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandment. Well, I'm reading another scripture now. I'm getting excited. Okay, 2 John 1 and 6 says, and this is love. That we walk after his commandment. You're supposed to be walking after the ten commandments. This is the commandment. Single. It's a love law. And so 1 Corinthians 13. Is what the ten commandments is all about. And when you really love. You'll stand and openly rebuke people that's wrong. Open rebuke is better than secret love. The street preacher was right. Hallelujah. This is the commandment. That as you have heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. Now if you don't want to obey Jesus, shut your Bible and stop reading it and stop calling him Lord. Because he said in Luke 6.46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? He just said, love is walking after God's commandment. 1 John 5 and 3. For this is love. Look at all these scriptures trying to explain love. A man of God, if he breaking the commandments, don't love God. A woman of God breaking the commandments, don't love God. Okay, how many times you say it? 
For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Look at how many times it shows up all over the Bible. And his commandments are not grievous. This thing is not. When I thought this was grievous. It's because I was entangled with false doctrine. I had let people lie to me. And it got me entangled with sin. For a season in my life. So I do have pity on people that are entangled. But I can't sit around and twist these scriptures. Not just because somebody. I wasn't twisting them when I was mixed up. I called it what it was. Until God freed me. You got to preach it if you want to reach it. You can't lie on this Bible and twist it just because something's wrong in my life. And if something's wrong, be encouraged. Man, we want to help you. Amen. God going to help you. He'll have mercy. Amen. All right. Let me skip a little bit. 1 Corinthians 7, 19. Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. But what matters is that you keep God's commandment. That's what one translation is saying. That's what Paul said here in 1 Corinthians 7, 19. In 1 John 2 and verse 3 and verse 4, I always read this and I love it. Hereby we do know we know him if we keep his commandments. You do not know God if you don't keep his commandments. If that's true, and it is because it's in your Bible too, saints, why your preachers don't teach y'all this on a regular basis? They're too busy teaching about prosperity. They're too busy teaching about trying to look at my ministry, walk in the spirit. But when did they tell you this and explain this to you? Bible said, here is how you tell you know God, when you keep his commandments. And verse 3, verse 4 says, he that saith I know him, and keep not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So when I get up and call somebody a liar, why I have to be harsh when I do that? Was Jesus, or was Paul, was John hard? Okay, let me quiet. You're lying if you don't keep the commandments. Y'all want me to say it like that? It ain't no different. I just happen to, you know, talk the way I talk. I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't got no issues with nobody. But the Bible says you're a liar if you don't keep God's commandments. That's in your Bible. I'm traveling. Where am I then? Okay. Now, believe it or not, I'm in my message. That was just my introduction to, because I'm teaching on idolatry. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the second commandment, right? And it's good in the New Testament. Under grace. Under the cross and under the blood. There ain't no blood ever wiped out these commandments. Ain't no grace God ever sent wiped out ten, God's ten commandments. Not there. So idolatry is one of God's ten commandments. He said it in the old. He said it in the new. And I just gave you scriptures to validate. It's all over the New Testament. It is serious. So, my message now is idolatry. That's my point, Sister Janelle. Explaining idolatry. Idolatry means the worship of idols. An idol is anything that takes your love, your reverence, and your admiration away from God Almighty and causes it to become an extreme love, reverence, and admiration for someone or something other than God the Creator. That's all idolatry is. God wants you to love, reverence, and respect him above everything in life and everything in your life. And that's his right. He made us all. Yeah. That is not too much to ask of somebody you created. Today I want to focus to show you again that idolatry is addressed in the New Testament under the new covenant and I want to end with the idols call our affections and our emotions I want to prove to you that many believers in the church their emotions have become idols 
That's why you gotta watch how you feel, what you feel about things, how you're feeling about things, how you're feeling about people. When people do me wrong, I, you know, you know, there's some things people can do that really deeply affect you. I don't get hurt by nothing. I'm gonna be honest with you. This last incident, I fought elder because I know better than this. Ain't nothing ever affect me. Nothing. I had to stay up some night. My wife didn't even know. I said, oh no, I ain't feeling like that. Oh no, I ain't gonna receive. Man, I had to fight to keep them feelings out of me, David. That's right. Come on. You're right. You're right. I promise you, I have a I ain't got I ain't mad at nobody, I ain't got nothing against nobody. I don't get hurt by nothing. I am not injured by nothing. But this last incident, I fought. I fought until I I had uh -uh, I, ain't, I ain't let them in me. I had to get up one night. Said, God, I need your help now. I never had this problem before. Satan thought he had me, but I got away. <laughs> I'm just telling, I'm coming out of reality and telling y'all preach this, but it ain't like I don't deal with devils. I deal with them, but I don't I don't fellowship with them. They ain't getting in me. So today I want to focus to show you again that idolatry is addressed in the New Testament. I think I've already showed you that. I'm going to read a few scriptures before I get to my closing uh, about idolatry in your emotions and affections. To show you again that idolatry is addressed in the New Testament under the New Covenant. And I want to end with the idols called our affections and our emotions. Now let me read a few idolatry scriptures again. Acts 17, verse 16. I got this in that dispute. Now, proving that disputing is, a, is it, uh, allowed by God. You got to have some disputers in the church to, to uh, uh, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. You got to have some people in the church, some preachers that ain't scared of nobody. I don't care if you ask me to come to your church. I don't have to be in your big circles. You can go on and undermine me and get me from among you. I don't care. I don't need that stuff. I don't need to be in your big world conferences. I don't need to be in none of that stuff. Hallelujah. Because I know you're a female window archer. Yeah, God, let me say it. So y'all got to excuse me. I said, I'm going to be who I am. You're a female wonder archie. That's all you are. And everybody know who I'm talking about. Okay, Acts 17, <laughs> verse 16 and 17. Now when Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred. I wonder who stirred Paul's spirit. The Holy Ghost. His spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given over to idolatry. So idolatry is still something God is concerned about in the New Testament. Here's a man of God. He was innocently waiting in the city. And, and his spirit just got stirred because he saw the whole city given over to idolatry. I see where the church is. I see where a lot of people is in their emotions. And i got to address idolatry in the soul. So watch this. The man given over, the man was stirred because he saw the whole city given over to idolatry. And watch what he did. Therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons. These were leaders. And in the marketplace every other Sunday. Daily this man went into the synagogues, went on Facebook, that's figuratively speaking, he went on radio station and he disputed. I thought we weren't supposed to dispute. Well, you got to cut that out your Bible. Paul went in and disputed daily. You said, why you won't stop saying things? Paul did it daily. Disputed in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the marketplace daily with them that met with him. First Corinthians 10, 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, here's another scripture on idolatry. Flee idolatry. So I'm just laying a good foundation to show you, God, hate, I, ain't nobody going to heaven with idols. 
Nobody going to be ready when Jesus comes if you got one idol. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Starting at verse 2. Set your affections. Let's, let's, let's give a little common definition of affections. What's on your mind? What you think about? What you feel? What, what drives you? What your passion is? What you, what you dearly love? What you are turned on by? Everything that affect you, your affections can become idols. The Bible said, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from adultery. I mean, I'm sorry, that too. Idolatry. Now, we talked last week about Buddha, about Mary, about the outward statues and idols. I want to talk about the internal idols called your own emotions. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Modify. You got to modify. I had to modify those feelings that I was feeling. If I didn't modify those feelings that I was feeling, I couldn't be able to help another preacher. I'm smarter now with preachers. But I had to modify those things. There are some emotions that you feel and will feel as a spirit-filled Christian that you're going to have to modify. You can't let it plant itself in you. That's it. Right. Hallelujah. That's good. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Modify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And he calls them out. Fornication. This is just a half list. There's a whole list of them. He said, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. Then he tell you what all this stuff is, which is idolatry. Like I said last week, a lot of folks ain't never identified all of these emotions and all of these actions to idolatry, but God has said out of his word that it is idolatry. 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. John, Apostle John said, Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. So you see the Bible teaches us to don't have nothing to do with idolatry. So I'm not making this message up. All right, Ephesians 4, verse 30, verse 18. Having their understanding darkened. Watch this operation here. Come on. Being alienated from the life of God, watch this, through the ignorance that is in them, watch this now, through the blindness, because of the blindness of their hearts. Now let's go backwards if we can. A person's heart is blind because of the ignorance, we back it up that scripture now, because of the ignorance that in them, Simply because they alienated from the life of God, having their understanding darkened. When you hear the truth and you reject the truth, God will send you a strong delusion to believe a lie and he'll darken your understanding of things. And that's what this scripture is talking about. Having their understanding darkened. Now you know why it got darkened. Because at some point they knew the truth. Hallelujah. Having their understanding darkened. Being, when your understanding is darkened, you're going to be alienated from the life of God. Hallelujah. Through, watch this, through the ignorance that's in them. Ignorance, you chose to be ignorant. That is in them because of the blindness of your heart. Your heart rejected God at some point. Right. Now watch this. I'm, I'm trying to show you something in the scripture. Who, watch this. Who being past. Somebody said past. past. Are y'all looking at that? Because I got all mine wrote down. Y'all see it? Okay. It says. It's showing you how, how a person. You, okay. You can progress. And what's the opposite of that? Degress. 
God is trying to show you how a person will degress in him. This is how it happened. You hear truth. You reject the truth. And God darkens your understanding. And your heart is blind. You're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance. You're ignorant for rejecting God's word. This is an operation. It's an operation. Okay? Now let me show you what, how it all got started. And I'm still on idol idolatry. Being what? Being verse, verse uh, being past. Being past. Hold on. Uh, verse 19. What being what? Past. Past what? Feeling. Let me try to help you. I feel something one day. Now I know it ain't right. And I don't deal with that feeling. Our feelings change all the time. Yeah. There are sometimes, some days for no reason at all, I'm the happiest man in the world. There's some time or just a spirit of depression or trying to set my mind. Why? Yes. I don't even entertain it. Yes. You got the wrong person, yes. fella. Right. I'm just trying to show you that but Jesus was Jesus was tested in, in all parts like as we are yet without sin. Come on with you can be tested in all of these things and ain't never got a sin one time. Yes. Come on, apostle. So when a feeling come, and I know the Bible don't agree with that, if I don't modify that feeling, that emotion, and I... I I, I, what it says, being past feeling, giving themselves over to lasciviousness. I let that feeling come in. I don't stop it. I don't modify it. And I allow it to germinate. And now I go past the feeling to do whatever I felt. I'm trying to explain idolatry. And if I have an affection to hate somebody, if I have a, a desire to be envious of somebody, if I have a... Okay, let me get real. There's a lot of men in the world with six-packs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me funny. <laughs> Come on, Apostle. There's a lot of women in the world that's foxes. If I'm out there by myself and I happen to see a fox... You can't stop looking. You can't walk around in the world like this. Yeah, right. But if I, my eyes happen to catch something, I got to stop that thing right away. I ain't, I got a fox at home. I got to stop that thought, stop that feeling, not have anything to do with it. Because what, what happened is if you look at that fox, if you look at that six pack, come on somebody. And you let that germinate, yeah. then you start liking sick packs. Yeah. <laughs> you start liking muscles. Commercial, come on, you, you. I, I, I know you saw me, but I ain't. I, yes, you're looking at it. Yeah. You're looking at it too many times. And what happens is, what happens? Satan keep building them things up in your emotions, uh, and you like that. And most women say he's hot. Idolatry. That's it. No, you know who hot? Your husband. That's it. Your wife. Oh. I'm just trying to explain to y'all how Satan constructs idolatry in the emotions. It could be the lust or desire to be wealthy. Nothing wrong with being rich, something wrong if you're not wise in your riches. Right. But it could be you can have a desire. To just be rich, to make a million, to have a pretty Mercedes. And nothing wrong with Mercedes, nothing wrong with all that. I'm just trying to show you how idolatry is constructed in people's souls. And you start desiring that. You're feeling for that. And that's your path. It could be for education. Education is so beautiful. You ought to get it all while you can. But you you can make an idol out of education. Yes. You can start liking a man so much until you ain't never touched a man but you done constructed an idol in your emotions. You can want 
uh, the same sex marriage is so much and you you're burned with passion and you think you was born that way and you think God made you that way but Satan made this is an operation Satan, I'm uncovering Satan how he put idols in people's souls and you start this is just a passion I like a woman like this I like a woman like this Because you can like a woman like this and that's my standard and that can become an idol. And church folks sit in church, laugh at Buddha, laugh at Mary, and, and Satan laughing at them. Because they got all kinds of emotions floating in them. Sitting in the church, amen preacher, amen apostle, amen. And got idols sitting in your emotions. Bible says set your affections on things above. Why? Because Satan has come to construct idols in your feelings. If you have an unnatural feeling come, you better, you better know that's warfare. You better deal with it. Don't, don't Satan gonna construct a little Buddha emotion in you. Is this making sense? Can I stop a minute? Can we stop the clock for just a minute? Give me some feedback. What have I said? Don't take up all the time. <laughs> somebody give me some feedback. Okay, I get to you all the time. Let me get somebody else right there. Not, not that your no, thoughts not important. Good. Come on, Elder. You Elba. have to cast down any imagination that's not of God. Every imagination, you every you thought. To step into sin. Right. But you have to cast that imagination down. You have to cast it down in the name of Jesus. And if we don't, Satan is after constructing yes. an idol. Yes. And God said, I hate idolatry. Yes, Come on, woman of God, you next. Come on. I just want to get some, some other people. The wild. Uh huh. Wilds are a careful plan of attaching. Satan got Satan, a scheme. He's got a scheme yes. to attach from with you from the blind side. He hit he attacks the inward parts. Because that's the inward part that he's trying to grasp the soul. Mm -hmm. Because the the, 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 the the spiritual man, you know, you have the spirit in the soul. Which is the candlelight of the Lord, the spirit of the man. Mm -hmm. But the enemy will carefully, everything, the fruit of the spirit is joy, is peace. He made you with these things. Your affections are lusts. And lusts are good because he made everybody good. In his natural state, his those natural those life. emotions yeah. for a man to desire a wife is a healthy thing. For a man to desire uh, intimacy is a healthy thing. It's unhealthy if your intimacy is outside of marriage. That's right. So if you don't control that feeling and you go past that feeling, you have constructed an idol. And so my point of teaching on idolatry today is to show there's more idolatry in the Christian church than in the Buddha church. Just as much. That's right. Sister Valeria. Give, give up a mic because I want people on Facebook to be able to hear it. To waste. <laughs> That's the truth. Okay, and yeah. so, and then what I just tied it into is in Philippians, when you start thinking about yeah. what things are true, yes. what things are lovely, yes. what things are just, what things are holy, yes. you think on those things. So when you see these other things in the natural, like Sister Shalanda was saying, cast all those imaginations down. Yes. So if you see in this, this Coke bottle shape. Are yeah. you seeing this muscle man? Yeah. You better say, when you look at it, okay, wait, wait, wait. A mind is a terrible thing. My to God. Raise. So let me have the mind of Christ. My yeah. God. Hey, yeah. What is Jesus saying I should think on? What, yeah. what yeah. should I be picturing? Yeah. Yes. What image should I be looking at? That's right. It's blindfold, spiritual blindfolds. Okay. Yes. 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 Everything's aligned. Yes. Yes. True. Yes. Holy, but you think on this. Walk away from it, just like Joseph yes. ran away. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Think about it. Ah. And if you don't yes. do that, yes. Satan is constructing <laughs> idols in your emotions. Yes. And then there's the Ten Commandments. Love. Love. Okay, so if I know 
All these Ten Commandments got to line up. Okay, now, do I love God more than I love this whole bottle of shape or this muscle man or what? Are these six packs of you hot? I'm telling y'all, I'm tearing idols down in Christianity. Oh, God, my God. Yes, Lord. Go ahead, Judy. And that's another, you can make your leader an idol. Yes. You have more respect for your leader than you have for this Bible. You, you take everything your leader say, and when your leader don't do this Bible, you still support and back your leader. Your leader is an idol. God hate idolatry. That's why I don't want people clapping for me no more. Now when we go to other churches, we can't control that. But we know better here. I'm going to move on when I finish. All of it. If you don't, you give in place to the devil. And what the devil going to do is he going to construct the idol? Because the Bible says set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. What he's trying to tell you is wherever your affection go in the earth, that's what Satan going to to construct the idol. Oh my God, my God. That's clear? That's clear. Okay, let's keep going. Y'all see idolatry a little bit clear? Yes. Okay. So it says, <clears throat> And being past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness, to walk in all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so learned, learned Christ. You didn't learn that from Christ. That ain't Christ. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He was touched with all of it. He, he was tempted in all points yet without sin. That means and people talking about, well, you can think wrong. You can't hear the, the, the thoughts of foolishness is sin. You ain't supposed to be thinking foolish. Right. What sort of things pure? What sort of thing love? The same verse. That's what you're supposed to think on. You telling me you can't do that? Bible said, let this mind be in you. I had to confront two preachers in the hotel. They're supposed to be holiness preachers. And here they is laughing at holiness and talking about, well, you can think for you can't just think. You can't stop sinning. You're a liar. And I got to deal with that, Elder. Yes. And I had to go to a hotel and deal with it. Now, it's sad. I'm telling you, we're in a sad day when preachers can't get it right. Yes. It's sad, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. That's how you can live. I'm living it. Mm -hmm. And so don't tell me you can't. And you can too. Elias was a man subject to like passion. Don't mean that he had some temper and he went off on people and put fear. That ain't what that means. It just said he was a man just like us who could feel and had emotions and feelings. Elias was a man of subject to like passion as we are and have prayed and prayed honestly that it might not rain and it rain and 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 it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. You know, you know what this scripture really trying to do? And I'm, I'm really finished. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm really finished. So let me wind everything up. You know what that scripture really trying to tell you? Elijah. Elijah everybody said, he's a great man of God. And he was. But what the Bible is trying to say, Elijah was just human like you. And he had same passions. He prayed and it stopped raining. So don't think. You ain't got the power to stop emotions from right. raining in your life. Right. Jesus. Don't think, we ain't talking about natural rain like he did. Right. I'm talking about whatever is raining in your life, whatever is harming you, wherever your weaknesses are, whatever you are tested and tried with. He said, just like Elijah stopped the rain, you, son of God, can stop whatever is raining in your life. Right. That's the real power. People, people talking about the power of God but deny the power thereof. The power is keeping your own soul clean. Yes. Keeping your own mind right. Yes. I ain't going to never hate nobody. I ain't never going to be jealous of nobody. I ain't never going to hold nothing in my heart. But I'm going to deal straight up with foolishness. Because that's who I am. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. For this opportunity to explain idolatry in affections. 
And Lord, we realize that all these things can become idols. And your Bible said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Thou shalt have no other God before me. I don't want no God of lust before you. I don't want no God of sweets before you. I don't want no God of food before you. Hallelujah. Paul said, I all things are lawful unto me, but everything is not expedient. So Father, I'm not going to let food control me. I'm not going to let emotions control me. I'm not going to let life control me. You will control me. Because you are my God. And I will have no other God before you. And I will not make unto thee any graven images. And I will not bow down to worship anything but you. I'm not going to worship my emotion. I'm not going to worship idols. I love you. Father, let these people on Facebook hear what thus said the Lord. Bless this congregation. Bless this people that you have given me responsibility over their souls. Father, strengthen them in every area. Y'all receive it now because I'm praying. The Bible said he sent his word and healed them. You don't necessarily need hands laid on when you can receive the word. Father, let your word heal everybody under the sound of my voice in this house first. You know their problems, you know their struggles, you know their weaknesses, but let them know in their weakness they are strong. Give all of them strength. And let them know I have compassion. I'm here to work with anybody. I'm here to help anybody. I'm not going to expose anybody. Don't let them misunderstand exposing folly when it's not repented of. But God, show mercy to all the people that's seeking to keep your commandments. Thank you, Lord. We vow to keep all your commandments all the days of our life. In Jesus' name.